Hey everyone, welcome to DIY Declassified. I want you to say goodbye to that fear and that anxiety that comes with tackling your everyday DIY projects because here, I'm gonna show you how to conquer them all. In this episode, we're gonna talk about how to tackle those stairs. They, they could be kind of overwhelming, kind of complicated. Don't worry about this. This stuff is, is it's, it's more hype and more stress than it really needs to be and I'm gonna show you how we can make this stuff a lot easier. You can see we've got our posts poured, they're dried, they've been set there for a couple weeks. I'm building a platform for this. So when you end up coming down the stairs, you end up stopping at a platform here, taking a 90 degree turn and coming back to walk into the rest of our backyard. So the first thing I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna build this landing. I'm basically just building another deck that's only four feet by four feet. Four feet by four feet. Four feet by four feet. I start by building out the frame of the deck. The platform itself is four feet by five feet, but the walking space is actually four feet by four feet. That extra foot is where the step from the upper deck will rest. As we get farther along in the build, it will make more sense. Throughout this video, you will see me basically building a mini version of the deck we made in the previous video. If you haven't watched that video, go ahead and click on the link at the top right corner just to see how we got to this point. Up to this point, you've seen me build the landing in preparation for the stringers. But how did I figure out the landing? How did I figure out the landing height compared to the deck? Again, this may seem like a daunting task, but I will show you how easily I did this. First, you need to know your total rise. Because my ground has a slight slope, I laid a level on the deck and measured from that level to the ground in the general area I wanted my platform. It came out at 68 and a quarter, but to make it easier to work with, I just rounded down to 68. The next item will be your run, which is the depth from the step from the front to the back. Basically, your kicker to the front of the step. I found a lot of mixed opinions on proper depth, anywhere from 9.5 to 11 inches. These right here are 11. Ultimately, I recommend figuring out what your local building code requires and stick to that. The next item to figure out is how thick are the boards or tread that you are laying. Like this one, it's about an inch and a quarter. Next thing you gotta figure out is how you're gonna connect your stairs to your deck. Once you gather all this information, head over to Dex.com. Like I mentioned in the first video, I am not sponsored by Dex.com. I just think their website's easy to use and it was a one-stop shop that I went to for pretty much anything that had to do with building this deck. All right, when you go to Dex.com, just navigate over here to the right where it says calculators. And then from there, you can scroll down and you see all the different calculators the website has. Go ahead and click on the stairs. From there, you just enter in all the data that we received before. And then when you click calculate now, it takes you on down and it shows you exactly the measurements that you're gonna have to have. Now from here, you have the drop down. You could either do nine rises, 10 or 11. You just end up having to change the rise on each one of those. I'm gonna leave it at nine rises. My step run is 10 inches, which I selected. My step rise is seven and an eighth. These two numbers right here are gonna be huge in doing your stringers. Now, the other thing that you need to remember is down here, your bottom step is actually gonna be shorter than the rest of your steps. And so they actually have the measurements here for you, for your bottom step. It's five and five eighths. Now, you've basically completed the hardest part of finding all of your measurements. From there, I drew out my stairs as if I didn't have a platform. The easiest way to add a platform is to think of it as a really big stair. Instead of having a 10 inch run, it's like I had a four foot run. So I picked the stair that would be my platform and the remaining stairs would just shift over. When I'm going to put this landing in, I'm using the six by six just like I did over here. It looks chunky. It's what me and my wife like. They're expensive. Six by sixes are expensive. And so I'm not gonna sit here and try to say, oh, we'll over measure it and just cut off any extras because it's wasted material, it's wasted money. So I know that from the ground to the top of that platform is 35 inches. Subtract off the platform, seven inches. Subtract that off of there. You're sitting at 28 inches. Um, now we can start subtracting some other stuff off of there too, my peers are sitting about two inches above the ground from there. If I'm sitting at 35 from the top of that platform, subtract the seven inches off of this, and then I'm just gonna subtract about two inches from there. That ends up putting me down to about 26 inches. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it at 27 inches just so that I have a little bit of extra. 
when you go to put these posts in, one thing that I like to check is that I'm not putting the knots where I may end up having to cut. Um, so like on this board specifically, there's a knot right here. Now do you remember what we were saying is we may have to trim these down just a couple inches? I don't want to try to trim through that. Um, knots tend to bind up my blades and it's, they're hard to screw through. They're just, they're not fun to play with. Um, so on something like this, I'm gonna put the knot towards the ground here. All right, so let's say that after you poured these, you put your bolts in and you may have just put the bolt in a little bit too high, right? This one, as you can see, it's rocking on there. It's not gonna be an even surface. So you could take a hacksaw, you could take a grinding blade, anything you wanna do to take that top off. But one thing you need to do, make sure you put the nut on that bolt before you do any cutting whatsoever. The reason is, is once you start to cut that, you're, you're messing with the threads that's at the top and you'll no longer be able to thread that nut on top of those threads. So throw the nut onto the bolt and then as soon as you cut it or grind it or however you take that down, you can then go ahead and unscrew that nut off of that bolt and it'll replace those threads where they need to be. Um, I'm telling you, if you don't put that nut on first and you go cutting that sucker, um, you may end up having to, to rent, buy, or, or borrow a tap and die set so that you could get that nut back on that bolt because you're not getting the bolt out of that. putting in your posts, I recommend bolting in all of your ties before screwing in your posts. This way you can measure them all against each other to ensure square, and you won't have to remove the wooden posts to adjust the base layer. All right, everybody. What we're at so far, we've got the post done, the beams done, the deck we already, the little platform we've already built, and we just set the platform right on top of this thing. So now we're gonna go on to cutting some stringers. I'm not an expert, I don't claim to be an expert. Um, I'm gonna show you how I do it and how I think it's gonna work. I believe it's gonna work out just fine. Um, if you find some other tips and tricks on how to do it, go ahead and comment below. Um, so that way we could share the knowledge and everybody can gain on that. When building stringers, one of the most important tools you will use is a framing square. I also recommend purchasing a set of these stair gauges. You clamp these down on your square, which allows you to duplicate your measurements time and time again. For my stringers, I have a 10 inch run with a seven and an eighth inch rise. When I lay the framing square on the edge, I line up those two measurements and put my clamps in place. With those two pins, I can then just walk them down and continue marking out my stringer. So now we're gonna try to figure out how we're gonna attach our stringers to the deck. You can see that each one, I've got a 10 inch run on this one, this one and this one but this one i've got an 11 and a half inch run okay that extra inch and a half is what ends up tucking underneath that deck okay, so remember we got the 10 inch run going in i added that extra one and a half inches right here on the end of this run and these two if i can get it straight ends up fitting right in between these two the nice part about this is i could either screw in from the face here to the to the piece that's back same with the back side these extra pieces that I got here, I would actually add extra blocking to each side of it and screw in from the side as well to add more shine. Just like your joists, the stringers will need to be 12 inches on center to properly support your composite decking material.
On the concrete landing, I am leveling and raising the pad a couple of inches from the surrounding area. When we work to complete the backyard, we have a few inches of topsoil to add, plus a couple inches of grass. I don't have a tamper to compress the ground, but this leftover 6x6 should do just fine. Keep in mind that you need to adjust your stringer measurements. Earlier we said my total rise was 68 inches, but with this concrete pad it ends up being only 64 inches. I then just build a box and stake it in. I make sure that it is level from side to side, but from the back to the front I want there to be a slight tilt. On my level you can see the bubble on the line instead of in the middle of the tube. Once this is all done, it's time to start mixing concrete and filling it up. I go more in depth on mixing concrete in the second video of this series, so if you missed that one, you can click on the link in the top right just to see how we got here. Honestly, this is the first concrete pad I've ever poured, and I did my best to smooth it out with the heat that we had. It just set up a lot faster than I had planned, but I wasn't too worried as I knew I was just going to run a broom across the top for texture. All right, so there's the concrete slab. I've already used the broom against it yesterday. Uh, just ran out of battery. But all you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your broom. You're just gonna lightly set it on there and just kind of pull and drag it across and it's gonna leave those marks and those indentations. Now that we've got the pad poured, I can get these bottom stairs mounted to the pad and the deck itself. In order to mount these to the concrete, you've gotta make sure that you have wood that is approved for ground contact. Um, so I ended up buying these two by fours here that are approved for ground contact. And what I did with that is I notched out my template here for the stringer since this stringer is going to attach to the deck, I ended up notching this piece out here down in the bottom. So these two by fours are going to sit in there. Uh, the two by fours are just slightly taller than this. So that no matter what, this does not actually touch the ground. You're going to see that there is that notch that's down there. So it doesn't ever actually touch the ground. It's in a little high. And the two by fours just end up going right underneath it. Those two by fours, I will then drill a hole through and I will attach to the concrete pad. Set up the stringers and level them to the deck first. Once I get them attached to the deck, I then move to marking the mounting locations for the concrete. Well, that does it for this episode. I want to thank you guys for watching. And if you guys want to continue to support this channel, make sure you like and subscribe below. It's completely free to you and it allows us to provide you fresh content uh, more frequently.